great grandkids, my great grandkids someday uh, walk this campus, the name Lauren Gresham is going to uh, be remembered forever around here because of the impact you've made on this university. What do you hope they remember? What do you hope future students remember was the legacy of, of Lauren Gresham? You know, I hope they would remember that I really believed in a type of higher education that was infused by vital Christian faith and it was not just another educational experience, but it was one that was uniquely different and distinctive because of the integration of faith into every branch of the curriculum. Uh, that used to be the norm. I mean, Harvard University, these early universities in this country were founded as faith-based institutions and they have lost that emphasis now largely, but uh, this is a type of an educational experience that is now really only embraced by maybe 125 institutions in this country out of 4,300. So it's become more rare and to be distinctive today, all we have to do is be who we say we are and be consistent with that and to live out our mission of making Christ-like disciples through higher education in Christ-centered community. If we do that, we're going to be very different from most of the other institutions in this nation. That sounds easy, but I'm guessing it hasn't been because there are a lot of quote-unquote faith-based institutions were founded that way, like you said, who have moved away from that through the years and yet you've kept Southern Nazarene on track. How difficult has it been and, and how have you accomplished that? It's, um, it is not easy because the culture is very seductive. I was at lunch uh, recently with a friend and we were just talking about the difference in the culture between when we were growing up and the students that are coming through high school and college today and the challenges they face that we did not face. And that tends to, to carry itself out into college and so that our student development professionals who have responsibility for overseeing a residential campus, they have lots of different kinds of challenges than they did 20, 30, 40 years ago. But the main difference is who teaches. And so we have become uh, much more aware of what kinds of screening and vetting need to be done for faculty members who will be very primary shapers of the thoughts and attitudes and worldviews of our students. So finding the right kind of faculty is not something that we can take for granted. When I was hired here, nobody asked me any theological questions. Nobody asked me any questions about biblical knowledge or understanding. There was just a whole lot assumed right. that we cannot assume anymore. We have to be very intentional in finding the kind of faculty that will carry forth our mission and be a good institutional fit.